Greetings fellow humans, I'm Martian Boo, and today's video is on Dragonite Articuno. Dragonite is a really powerful non-EX attacker, and one of the biggest struggles with the archetype is figuring out the perfect Pokemon to go with it. I tried Weezing before, and that was a pretty good partner, but while I was playing that deck, I had it suggested to me that the baby Articuno was interesting, and so I finally tried that out today, and I was pretty pleased with it. So the benefit of the Articuno is you can run Misty, which will allow you to occasionally high roll two or three energies to be able to attack with the Articuno without missing too many energy that you want to be attaching to your Dragonite. If you fail the Misty, then it's an 100 HP body to absorb attacks while you slowly power up Dragonite on a basic, not having to evolve from coughing to wheezing in order to have high enough HP to absorb damage is a big bonus. So overall, I think the Articuno Misty package is pretty solid, and I'm going to be looking to explore adding that to slow stage 2 decks in the future. I hope you enjoy the games, and thank you so much for watching. Magic lets you have 200 decks. That's way too many to me. <laughs> like, if I have more than, you know, five or so decks, by the time I get back to some of my older ones, I'll want to rebuild them from scratch anyway, so like, it doesn't really do me much good to have that many decks. Well, this is about as good of an opening hand as I could have expected. Now, Misty, I need you to roll at least two heads. Preferably three, but I will accept two. <laughs> I played a little bit of this yesterday, and... I, I played against, I think, three Articuno X decks, and never saw a heads on Misty. It was pretty funny. Like, <laughs> my opponents were not, were not doing too well with those flips yesterday. And here I am, continuing the tradition. You love to see it. Might be a bit too much, but it lets me have different versions of the same deck with slight differences, which is hard to do in other games. That's fair. What does this Articuno do? It does for three, it does 60, and if heads, you get to flip a coin, and if heads, it's paralyzed. Not the Articuno, the defending Pokemon. <laughs> three for 60, and if heads, you are paralyzed. That would be terrible. <laughs> I think... I see slightly worse with my contacts than I do with my glasses. I don't know that it has anything to do with the prescription necessarily. I think it might just be the nature of contacts, but hard to say for sure. Alright, we need a Dragonair in our life right now. That's my opinion, based on Dragonair stuff. How will you guys hear me? Am I supposed to be like this? It's so tough to get my microphone just right, you know? You guys know how it is. You all know how it is. It's been my experience too, that and the price made me go back to wearing glasses. I don't intend to wear contacts every day. I think, especially like mostly on stream, I'm probably gonna be wearing glasses. But <clears throat> I want to wear my contacts a lot in succession for at least, you know, a week or so because I want to get used to wearing, to being able to put them in, you know. But then I'm probably gonna scale down to like once or twice a week because, yeah, the, I mean, they are a little expensive, so. I don't really want to be doing that all the time. Yay! Alright, well, we can Dragonite next turn. That'll be cool. And... The potion will help us mitigate some of this Blizzard chip. I've been wearing them for so long that I look my I look weird to everyone without them, including myself. I've never worn contacts in my life. Oh, interesting. Oh, you'd never worn glasses in your life. Yeah, that was me, like... When did I get them? It's probably like 2018, 2019. 
I think it's 2019, I think, actually. Yeah, that's when I got them. The glasses. But before then, I'd never won glasses. I thought they might do this. All right, so the potion probably wants to hit the... Yeah, certainly wants to hit the benched Articuno then. Well... <laughs> One of these is gonna die, right? So we just have to accept it. We can put one of them off for... I mean, Dragonite, Dragonite might save it. You know, you never know. <laughs> so do we let them both die? No, right? Like, one of, they're not both gonna die to Blizzard damage. Pretty sure. One of them will, or... or Yeah. Hey, look at me. Look at me, all those Misty's Tales. Anyways. Boop. Nice. Ish. Well, I mean, it means they can't make a Starmie. It, it was 100 wasted damage, right? So they, we're not too happy about that. But the fact that they can't make a Starmie is kind of big. I think we're toast. <laughs> yeah, because we've made no progress on either Articuno, right? So we're gonna have to get super lucky. Yeah, we're we're gonna have to get 150 on one Articuno. Because there's no saving, there's no saving anything anymore. It's just Jover. No heads on the Misty was a disaster. Mm. All right, I'm gonna start powering up this Dratini. Because if we get two heads on one of the... If we get two heads... Or two hits on the same... Right. We'll, we'll, either, we'll either knock one out or we'll set one up to die to Dratini. Alright, perfect. Just win though, just win though. Please, thank you, thank you. Dragonite, what a blessing. What a blessing. <laughs> you're, 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 you're a cool dude, Dragonite. I'm sorry I ever doubted you. I don't know a lot about Pokemon. What's the upside of running baby Articuno? So the idea is Articuno is a basic with a high amount of HP, which means even if it's not doing anything, it stalls for a decent amount of time for you to set up a Dragonite. And the reason you would want Articuno over something like Snorlax or Kangaskhan is because with Articuno, you can run Misty and sometimes high roll a bunch of energy onto the Articuno, allowing it to use its attack to both chip and stall even better by paralyzing. I really want an Articuno, so I'm researching first and then Pokeballing. But, oh, we got it. Um... I'm never like, okay, it, it's so scuffed. If you play around red card, they don't red card you. And if you don't, then they do red card you and you get you get wrecked. It's so, it's so annoying. But like, I wanted to save this because I don't want them to Sabrina me, right? So I've now played around the red card by using my X speed in advance, which opens me up to being annoyed by Sabrina. It's really frustrating. <laughs> in three days? Yep. Mm -hmm. Alright, well, here's a Dragonair. And Misty, let's see how we do. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm gonna start powering this up then. And that'll be our Sabrina protection. <clears throat> Misty has not been good to me today. Oh golly, Dragonite Articuno, is this forbidden technology? It is. It is forbidden. I forbid you from doing it. Potion would be nice here. Oh my goodness. Look at me go. Alright, Misty, come on. Come on, please. One time. Give me three heads one time. Yay! <gasps> Beautiful. Beautiful. I forgive you, Misty, for how cringe you've been. 
the last three flips. Alright, so there's the upside of running <laughs> Articuno. Now let's get the Paralyze, too. Paralyze it. Actually, it doesn't matter this time, right? We want to paralyze them next time. Right. Good job, Articuno. Save the heads for next time. From Misty to Hitty. From Misty to Hitty in one action? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. Success. Alright, Artic. Oh, they're powering up the benched one. Interesting. Articuno, show me. Right, heads. Show me a heads. Come on. Let's wreck him. No. Brutal. But on the bright side, it did a bunch of damage, and uh, we almost have a powered up Dragonite. My opponent doesn't have a Curlia yet, which is a disaster for him, so we're happy about that. This could be this could just be over, right? This could just be over here. <clears throat> like if we get a hit on the active and we knock out either of the benched scrumbies. We've used both Misty, right? So it's no use benching this Articuno. I don't think. Let's just win. Oh, neat. <laughs> Look at that. There are too many things in this game that require you to wait for an animation to finish before you can move on. And I think that's probably my biggest problem with it right now. Which is pretty good for a Pokemon game, honestly. Usually, <laughs> usually the IP is so strong that they like phone it in so hard that I end up having a ton of problems. You know, Pokemon games are not polished products. They just kind of like put out something that's pretty good and it's always good enough because the IP is broken, right? Like people just love Pokemon, myself included. So they don't really have to try that hard. And because they don't have to try it that hard, by the time I get a Pokemon product, there are a lot of, like, really obvious things wrong with it, in my opinion, that they could just fix. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think the animations being slightly too long, excuse me, on, like, just on average, is maybe my biggest complaint with the game. With Bizarre closed beta on 10.30 and Pokemon Pocket wide release on 10.30, are you planning to play either? I'm planning to play Pocket, but I'm also going to go get... I'm going to go pick up Barkley on that day. So... It's probably going to be in the afternoon. I definitely won't have time for both. I really need to make sure to set up my Bizarre account. They're red carding me again, interesting. Mm. I don't think this hand is worse. Eh. I'm going to take a hit. Their hand is so big, right? We have to assume they have a Sabrina. I think I'm going to take a hit now. In hopes of top decking and X speed next turn. That's my big plan. Because I'd much rather X speed and evolve than. What? Thank you. 
I don't care about Articuno in the slightest. Ooh, that was pretty strange. That was pretty strange. I don't, I don't understand that move. Oh, okay, so uh, at least my Gambit would have pulled up or uh, paid off, right? Wouldn't have had to drop the energy. Now we're just happy campers, right? Here, let's give them the Sabrina. Let them be annoyed. <laughs> I wish this thing would just automatically flip. That's so annoying. <laughs> like to have to do the like the the flip animation kind of sucks, right? Should I waste my Misty on this Articuno that's probably going to die? I think there's no reason not to. There's no reason not to. Yep, see? It didn't matter. Alright. But we're just going to sit here and Dragonite them away. Forget what I was talking about. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> I don't like when people would- oh, the, the coin flips. Yeah, the, the coin flips are pretty unsatisfying the way they have it set up. It just, like, it doesn't feel like you're flipping a coin. I, I, I think the coin is like, you know, it doesn't really follow your finger very well. And, I don't know, like, it because it, part of it is it, like, stays on screen all the time, right? So, like, if, you're, if your finger goes too far past, yeah, it just doesn't line up very well. But, yeah, so I don't like the flipping action, it's not satisfying. And it just makes it so that both players have this little extra step of having to wait for someone to actually activate flipping the coin, you know, like, it's better if it just flips for you. I doubt they'll change that, though. I'm not skipping the thanks because I'm bitter. I'm skipping the thanks because the thanks animation takes a little bit too much time and shop tickets are not useful. Like. Uh, once you get a certain amount of shop tickets, you don't need them anymore, right? So, even if someone wants them right now, they have a lot of access to shop tickets, and eventually they're gonna run out. Like, I I stopped needing shop tickets on my second day of playing, so it's like, I don't really feel like I'm depriving my opponents of anything by not doing the thanks animation. So when I'm eager to go to the next game, I tend not to do it, just because it saves me a little bit of animation time. All right, Misty, show me what you got. Yay! Aww. Yay, all right, at least something went right. At least something went according to plan. So, there is what I would consider the golden age of Pokemon trading card game was like Ruby Sapphire through, what was the last one? Power Keepers, I think was the last one. So that, that whole Ruby Sapphire era was my favorite time in Pokemon. And a lot of people agree, so there's like a pretty, a pretty decent chunk of people. Hey, look at all these heads. Look at us go. We actually get to do it. All right. My opponent just got riggedy wrecked, by the way. It's over. We have the high ground. So there's a pretty decent, like, retro scene <clears throat> centered around that time in Pokemon. And so much so that a lot of the trainers that, you know, when I was 15, 16, 17, were like 10 cent trainers, like 10 cent to a dollar <laughs> that are worth 20 bucks now because people actually want to play that format. So, uh, <clears throat> anyways, 
the the Pokemon themselves, like the expensive Pokemon like Rayquaza, EX, Delta, and things like that, end up costing a lot too. Like, you know, those get up into the, you know, high 70s, 100s, you know, whatever for decent condition ones just because people need to have those rare cards. But it's funny to me that the commons and uncommons are worth so much from that era. But I don't think... So my favorite deck from back then was Metagross Dragonite. And I don't think I have enough Metagross and Dragonite anymore to rebuild it. Like, I, I lost a lot of my pieces from that era of my life just as I grew up and moved out places and who knows. But what I do have is Dragonite EX Delta, the green one, the grass one. And that one had for two colorless energy, 40 damage, and your opponent can't play functionally items. Uh, they weren't called items back then, but functionally items. My opponent just lost this video game so good, chat. Look at them getting wrecked while I talk about old formats. And so I, I still have three of those. So I could build the... I think I would need a Latios EX. I'm not sure I have one of those. I might. Like the Latios EX Delta I would need. But also, that deck doesn't require a star Pokemon. There's a Pokemon with, um, there's a, a type that's, you know, Pokemon, the Pokemon's name, Star. And you can have one of those in the deck. Anyone you want, but only one. Uh, but the, the Defen, yeah, Defen was the attack. The Defen Dragonite EX doesn't need one. So the stars are the most expensive things. Like, I can't hope to get one of those. Like, I'm just not even, like, unless I eventually, like, blow up on YouTube or something and become way more successful than I could ever dream, then, like, then then maybe I can start to afford to drop a thousand dollars on a piece of cardboard. But <laughs> in the meantime, uh, no, it's not happening. So... I, I kind of have to restrict myself to decks that don't have a star in them, because they, they end up being like a thousand dollars, it's crazy. But... Uh, I could build the... the Delta Dragonite one. I might need one more copy. I think I'd probably get away with just three, but I might need to get one more. Another thing I have... is I have three... heavily played... <laughs> <laughs> Team Rocket Sneasel, which was really important EX, uh, which was really important to the Drag Trode deck. And the Drag Trode pieces are much less expensive than I expected them to be. Well, it's a shame... <laughs> it's a shame we don't have an X speed in our hand, because we could be attacking right now. Did you know, you can attack on the first turn, you just can't attach an energy on it. So if you Misty, you can attack on the first turn just fine. But anyways, I have... Like, the, the actual Dark Dragonite and the Dark Electrode for Dragtrode were more affordable... more affordable than I was expecting. So, having the Team Rocket's EXs, even though they're in pretty terrible condition, they used to belong to my friend. Where were you last turn? They used to belong to my friend, and he really likes to... <laughs> Every once in a while, I go through my collection, and I'll find a card that has, like, a giant, like, V-shaped crease at the top of it. And I'll be like, oh, yep, that belonged to him. <laughs> but anyways, so I have those. And I could build Dragtrode. The thing is, Dragtrode does want to play a star. So as if I have a Dragtrode deck, I'm playing a strictly worse version of it by not having a star. So that's why I'd be less interested in that one. Is Misty the best card in the game? No. I don't think so. I think it's a good card, but it, while it is really, really good when it gets a bunch of heads, it, it's like the whole archetype is pretty mid when it gets tails on the first one, right? So I, I've really cooled down on Misty and Moltres. I think the Moltres decks actually suck. They're there's, it's too inconsistent to get an evolution out. So like, 
when Moltres gets some heads and you evolve Charmander on curve, the Moltres deck is unstoppable, right? And so you get a you get a sense in those games that the Charizard deck is broken. But when you play the Charizard deck, you realize that unless things go perfectly, the deck is unplayable. So like Moltres in particular, I think that's not even a high tier deck, I don't think. I would put Moltres Charizard in like tier three. The Articuno Misty deck, I would put as a tier one deck, but I don't think it's that far ahead of the others, honestly. I think, oh man, do I stall the, do I stall the Mewtwo or do I just kill the Gardevoir? I'm gonna kill the Gardevoir because I it's gonna force them to use the second attack if they want to knock out Articuno because they have this potion. And then we get at least a little bit of extra time, so. Because they have to attach manually otherwise. But yeah, who knows? Might be a terrible idea. <clears throat> but yeah, so sometimes, sometimes a player will start with Articuno EX and flip a bunch of heads with Misty. And again, the deck will feel, the card will feel unstoppable, but like, I've really been paying attention to my opponents playing the Articuno deck when they get Tails, and it's pretty beatable. So like, I, I think it's polarizing. Like, it's the type of effect that's a little, you know, ideally you wouldn't have these like blowouts where your opponent flips a ton of heads with Misty and then they're just unbeatable. Ideally you wouldn't have that at all, but as far as like the raw power of it, I don't think it's consistent enough to be like that far ahead of the pack. I feel like the Articuno Starmie Misty deck might be the best deck in the game, but it's not that far ahead of Pikachu and Gardevoir Mewtwo, if it even is ahead. High variance decks make things balanced. All right, sick. Okay, so we, we get the Dratini. <laughs> now we're Sabrina proof. And all we need to do is knock out any one of those things with a Dragonite and we're good. So we're Sabrina proof for losing our Dragonite, right? We're not Sabrina proof as far as them. Like it, we're just in a terrible position that we have to make this play. But attacking with Dragonite has some decent likelihood to just end the game on the spot, so I think it's worth it, especially because they can't use that attack again yet. The one that, that would actually knock out Dratini after Sabrina. So yeah, I'm like super confident that playing that was the right play, but otherwise, this does open us up to them being able to Sabrina around the Dratini, around the Dragonite to take their third point. Get the ghastly, let's go! You know, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> Them benching the ghastly was big for me at least? Yeah, for sure. Not that it mattered. <laughs> I, I wonder... It, it kind of was the right play, right? Maybe? It's hard to tell with Dragonite. I don't know how to do the math on that. But if... If my opponent just has two Mewtwo out when I attack with Dragonite, the only way that that can be spread out to where they don't lose the game when I attack with Dragonite is for our 100 to hit each of them. So if if it's extra weighted to the bench one or if it's extra weighted to the front one, they lose. So I think you're more likely to lose in that spot than win. But if you bench the Ghastly, now you can do, you still get that 100-100 split on the Mewtwo's that gives them time, but you also have 150-50 that it can work. But you're also, I don't know, it, it, it's tough. I, I don't know how to do the math on that one as far as like whether it's better to go for the, you know, hope that an even split on the Mewtwo's happens versus does having the extra 150 can go 
one of the 50s can go to this ghastly does that make the difference i, I wouldn't know ghastly dodge but at what price <laughs> not gonna lie i do like this i do like this version a lot better than the wheezing version i think wheezing ended up being pretty clunky especially because <clears throat> the coughings and wheezings can never attack right and the coughing doesn't have high hp until it evolves articuno starts off with five h with high hp and I don't need to use my supporter to get it out of the active position. I can X speed it. And it also has the ability to attack, right? Whereas the the Weezing will never attack. So, I don't know. I think the Articuno... Uh, I think I like this build better. I think I've been enjoying it. This feels like a semi-real deck right now. <laughs> Usually it feels like a fake deck. Smack. Rude. Hoping to get a potion. Hmm. Do I Misty? So, Starmie has two water for 90, which can knock out my Articuno right now. If I Sabrina, they need both X speed. Or a good Misty. Eh, they could they could top deck Misty too. Hmm. Do I want to go for a high roll or do I want to go for Sabrina, which will likely put my opponent in a position to where they can't knock out Articuno next turn? I'll, I'll Sabrina. We can Misty next turn. We'll go the safe route. Too much recost on Articuno EX is a lot. Scary. Alright. Well, here's a Misty. Heads? <gasps> Alright, fine. <laughs> Hopefully we hit Paralyze. Good, perfect. Everything went so well. It didn't go perfectly, because I still had to skip an attachment on the Tratini. And now we don't for sure have a lightning energy by the time it evolves, but... You know... Some stuff. Can our Articuno flip aheads again? That's the real question. I think if Articuno... Hmm... And I hope that next one is a lightning energy, or we are just we are just so scuffed right now. I'm trying to decide if it's worth. Eh, we'll, we'll just go for it. I was trying to uh, decide if it was worth getting a head start on the Starmie, but no, right? Oh, <laughs> sick, sick. All right, please. Next energy, a lightning energy, please. Don't don't me don't do me like this. If not, then can I at least have my other Articuno so I can play this Misty on it? Better better them do that now than later, right? Like we're now we can still X speed our way out of this. Lightning energy, lightning energy, lightning energy. Yeah! Alright, sick. This just went, this just went swimmingly. <laughs> and even. Now I should try to get a heads on that Starmie, right? Yeah. But. I forget I was going to say something, but I lost it. You know how I am. Anyways, let's just get let's just keep getting heads until the end of time. Let's really let's really make a mauled. Ah, too bad. <laughs> I 
the slight risk to what I just did is there's no guarantee that Articuno won't soak up all 200 of the damage, right? So there is a, a little bit of a chance that leaving up the Articuno makes it harder for Dragonite to end the game, but yeah. Oh, bench that Staryu, if it's a Staryu. Neat. Now Staryu is awful to bench, right? Is it though? Huh. Yeah, I don't know. It's not looking good for them no matter what they do. But yeah, watch 200 at the start. <laughs> I, I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it happen to me or as me where you go to attack with Dragonite and all 200 hits the same target when there's multiple targets. I haven't seen that happen yet, but <laughs> I think it's going to eventually. It's going to be very silly when it does. 